All right, I'm here with Mike Brady at Jack's Hometown Pizza. Can you kind of give us a little bit of the background story of like who Jack is, how long he's had this property, and and uh, how long you've been here in Sanford? Sure, yeah. Um, my son Jackson Brady uh, is the business owner, and he actually bought the business from my brother Greg, um, and he took over January 1st of 2019. And so Jack, uh, at that point, was a senior at Northwood University. And um, so we did a quick kind of, not a remodel, but just a redecorate to kind of give him his own look of the building that night. So we, uh, it was kind of a fun thing. We came in, my wife and I, and my in-laws, and, and Jack's fiance at the time. And when he closed at eight o'clock on, Jan or on uh, uh, New Year's Eve, we worked all night. And he reopened the next morning at 11 a.m. with a new, totally new look in the building on his first day of business. So that was fun, and he had a great first year of business. Uh, that year, Jack then bought a house later in, in that year, and then he graduated from Northwood University, and then he got married in August. So he had a very full year uh, in 2019. And then, um, so this spring, or early, uh, early spring, he, um, had an opportunity to rent another building and start another business. So out on M20 in Midland, he started a business called Poppy's Place. And he named that after his grandpa, Jim Myers. And uh, so we did a remodel of that building. And unfortunately, Jack opened on the day that Governor Whitmer shut down restaurants and made them takeout only. And it is a restaurant. Uh, luckily, he did fine with takeout there. And so things were going good for him. He, he was having uh, good business here, good business there. And then the day of the flood came. And uh, that afternoon, um, Jack gave me a call. I said, hey, Dad, can you bring your generator over? Consumers is going to be shutting our power off at 6 o'clock. I said, yeah, uh, I'll bring it over. He said, yeah, they, they believe the water might get up to our parking lot. And I've never seen, all the years I've lived in the area, I've never seen that bad of a flood here, that they were actually predicting water this far into town. And I said, well, wait a minute, uh, maybe you should start looking at getting things out. So he started bringing any of his fresh stuff, anything he could fit in his vehicle, and he took it over to his other location. Um, when he was in the process of doing that, the alarm went off on the phone, the alert that the, the dam had broken in Edenville. So I called, he said he had gotten the alert, and uh, I said, oh, I think you should just get your people out, out and close the doors and be done with it for the night, uh, and hopefully nothing happens, right? So uh, he did that, and uh, simultaneously we get additional alarms and everything. My in-laws live in Midland. Uh, my father-in-law at the time uh, um, was suffering from a lung disease and was on oxygen and everything and they fell into one of the evacuation zones. So my wife and I loaded up and went and, and picked them up and brought them out to our home and then all night we were kind of on flood watch uh, to see what was happening here. Uh, and we weren't really seeing any updates as far as this building goes. We knew the water was rising in town and we didn't know how far it had gotten. When we went to bed that night around 10, 11 o'clock, my daughter sent us a picture that she had found online, taken from the perspective, probably you know roughly up past Alex's, and you could see in the background the water was up to his roof. Um, and so it was just it was heartbreaking, you know, to see that. And uh, so we went to bed knowing that my son's business was completely underwater. Uh, the next morning, uh, we saw additional pictures. Uh, one of them made, uh, I think, national news of his sign kind of leaning and completely submerged for the most part. And as the day went on, the water dropped and dropped, of course, and uh, we finally were able to come in um, and check it out uh, the next evening. And everything was covered in a layer of mud silty mud you probably have seen it you've been at a lot of the places hey everybody uh jackson brady here owner of uh, jack's hometown pizza uh so today's the first day i'm gonna be able to get in here and take a look at the pizza place and i just thought since it's your hometown too i would take you with me so here we go i can go through the window too if i want but chose not to Holy Oh. Holy what am I doing? Oh. 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 Oh
my step in there. Sorry for my language. Oh, TV looks fine. That's good. Holy shit, I don't even know where to start. Any horizontal surface uh, had mud, including above the drywall uh, inside, right? Above the ceiling drywall. Equipment, uh, there's a piece of equipment over here. Um, this was a pizza prep table, the silver piece here. Stainless steel, very heavy. He had some even bigger than that that the that were buoyant enough that they had flipped up on end. They were blocking the doorway into the kitchen. Um, we had to use some pretty heavy pry bars and stuff just to kind of move them enough to be able to safely get in there. Windows were all blown out. Absolutely disgusting. Wow. So as you can see, glass everywhere. I mean, tables and chairs look all right. At least the chairs. I, uh, oh yeah. Missing part of the ceiling, not a good sign. Honest with everybody, what I'm looking for right now is a register full of money, and it's still there. Oh, holy cow. That's going to be a tomorrow project. There ain't no way I'm getting in there. <laughs> oh. What? Oh, hey, look here. Some shoes. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, right there. All spends the same, right? Damn, well that's coming with me. What we got here? Original sign. Oh, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. Well, the ovens are still where they should be. My magnet that holds my knives on there, that's good. But that is my entire prep cooler. Yeah. Dough mixer's in the same spot, that's good. I was never able to move it. Um, so the process started the next day. We came in, uh, we had a plan actually at that point of let's just get his mixer out of the building. It's, it's a Hobart mixer, stands about this tall. Uh, it's ancient, and, uh, but to replace it, even with a used one, is about $4,000. Uh, so I showed up to take his mixer out. I met Jack over here. That was all we were planning for that day. And when I showed up, some friends of ours were here and they had already started to pitch in in terms of getting the, bu the building cleared out. So that's what that day turned into. Uh, and uh, the whole family uh, uh, of, of Jack's friends came, they helped, other people that they knew came, strangers came, uh, and we had you know so many people here and we were just hauling things out of here. Um, the walk-in cooler in the back was demolished along with a roof that went over it. And so the contents of that, of course, were all over and it was very hot. You know, I think it was in the 90s at that point. Uh, and so we didn't want to have the smell. We didn't want to have rodents or anything like that starting up. So we got all that out, filled the dumpster completely, and then just started making piles. Uh, his dumpster actually ended up down the road a little ways. Uh, somebody pushed that back with a tractor for us and we started filling it.
There's our sign that made the, the national news as it was partially floating down the river. Gotta call my insurance guy later. The plan is I only want to be shut down for like two weeks. I'm, I'm really hoping by June 1st we can, we can open her up and get going. Don't know how likely that is or not, but I've got a lot of people that are going to help me out. In the meantime, if you're hungry for some pizza, go ahead and call Poppy's place. Out on M20, where Annabelle's own used to be. We'll be open uh, to the public tomorrow. Today we're just doing uh, free pizza giveaways to first responders and people who have been displaced from their homes. So... If you know anybody who is worthy of a pizza, have them give me a message on the Poppy's Place or my, my personal Facebook. We're going to start start cranking them out about lunchtime, and we will go until we run out of supplies, I guess. But that's, that's the plan for today. So we made good progress on the cleanup that day. So the next day we decided, well, let's keep rolling, right? And uh, so some more friends and family came and we gutted the building. Um, this is a block building. We took all the drywall off. There were multiple layers of drywall. It's a very old building. And pulled the ceilings down. Uh, we took it down to the furring strips and the studs. All the electrical came out. Man, oh man. Well, I just, I gotta be honest, I can't believe that money didn't float away on me. That's quite impressive. Um, I don't even see a, oh, oven mitt, good. Uh, hmm, I don't even see a way to get back there. So, I think that's gonna be a problem for another day. I'm really just looking for one thing right now, and I got a wild feeling I'm not gonna find it. Oh God, I should've wore boots! Oh my God, there it is. My wife painted this for me when I opened Hometown last year. And might need a little bit of work, but the words are still there. There she is. Alrighty, mission accomplished. Got my money, got my signs. Everything came out of the building. Off to the side here, there's a storage area that was full of things that were there when Jack moved in. Uh, the building owner sent some folks in and they totally cleaned that out and, and got everything out of it. So in the course of about two days, the building did get gutted. Uh, and we power washed the inside, we sprayed with bleach. Um, you know, we did our best to get it clean the ovens were still in there and so he had um, four ovens actually they're you know about six feet wide these ovens are and there's two in each stack so they're side by side you know two ovens and then two ovens and those actually stayed in here for a few weeks we originally had some hopes that well maybe you know we can clean those out right and just no, no way. It, it, we finally decided to, you know, really take a hard look at those, and we ended up taking those ovens out, and uh, we just put them out to the street. That was a, a day of work to get those out. We put them out to the street with free scrap metal signs on them. Figure somebody, if they want to go to the work, they can have that scrap metal, and they were gone within two hours. <laughs> so it was a fair trade as far as we are concerned. Okay, so we're at uh, we're at Hometown Pizza, Jack's Hometown Pizza in Sanford, getting ready to rebuild after the flood. These ovens are about to come out.
So fast forward, uh, uh, near the end of June, um, we worked out a deal with the, the building owner uh, where we're doing as much of the work as we possibly can. And we've checked in with the building authorities and everything, and they were okay with that. And so we decided to start rebuilding. Um, so we're building interior, we built an interior wall inside of the block so that we could better insulate, make the building more efficient. And um, the building originally only had about seven and a half foot high ceilings. We raised the ceilings up to nine feet, a little bit of a, you know, arch ceiling in there. And uh, if you want to come in, I can show you a little bit of the building. Let's go take a look. So yeah, this is uh, Jack's hometown pizza. So um, the only thing that's still here from before the flood are, is of course the block walls. The rafters have all been cleaned and sprayed with an anti-mold product and the underside of the roof has all been cleaned and sprayed. Um, but all the other construction you see is new. Um, as you can see, we have a higher ceiling here. Try to open things up and make it a little bit more airy. Um, we've expanded the dining room space a little and kind of rearranged the building to make a little more sense. Uh, it's primarily takeout business, right? So um, you know, we're trying to accommodate the kitchen a little better and, and make things more efficient for them. So it'll be a walk up to the counter. Uh, I've got a piece of stone on order that we're gonna use as a nice countertop here. We've been doing everything, pulling wire, grinding floors, carpentry. There'll be a little bit of, the plumbing fortunately is largely undamaged because it was all in the slab. Um, everything seems to drain fine and we've done a lot of testing. Uh, with the drains and running water in them for a long time, everything like that to make sure we're not gonna have any issues. And, and so I think we're okay there. The bathroom door won't open, but I can confirm that it looks like the sink might be on top of the toilet. So we're just consolidating space in there moving forward. I'm sure these gumballs are still fine if everybody wants some. Could be worse. Could definitely be better. Um, and then out back, uh, we had a couple treasures that showed up for us here. Um, we're in the process this morning of finishing up some siding on the back to kind of clean the building up. And um, this was all torn out where you're standing right now. This cement area was his walk-in cooler. And so that all collapsed. There was a roof that tied into the existing roof up here. And when that fell, it tore off the bottom edge. And you can see there's different color shingles here because we couldn't find a match. Mm. Uh, but we were able to put new decking on the roof and integrate into the shingles and, and repair that. We're gonna go walk out and around this building here because also my, my dumpster that should be there is actually over there. We're just gonna walk around back here. Cause I saw in a picture yesterday, somebody's big like exterior walk-in cooler was floating down the river. <laughs> it looked a lot like mine. <laughs> there is a fishing net over my uh, satellite. But yeah, this is my, my walk-in cooler right here. Wow, old, so that's a shed actually. Or a house? No, that's a shed. All right, well, if you're missing a, uh, a white shed, I have it for you. Uh, I'd be happy to just let you have it back. It actually looks like a nice little shed too. It doesn't look like it's broke or anything. So he's going to all uh, what they call reach-in refrigeration rather than a walk-in refrigerator. And, um, you know, this will just be open space back here for now. At some point, we're hoping to maybe do a deck back here uh, to give people extra dining options um, for outdoors. But 
yeah the backyard was just it's still a little bit of a wreck <laughs> but that's his uh, coke cooler that was in inside there was uh this shed was actually up turned up like this and stuck into this tree and one day somebody came by with some heavy equipment to knock it over you couldn't get in it because the door was down um, and it turns out this shed i believe belongs to the gentleman next door the good all insurance agency there was some paperwork in there and so my wife contacted his daughter-in-law and let him know uh, and they did come get everything out of the shed at least uh, but that still has to go um, interestingly enough I, this must have been in the shed it's a cylinder block off of a motor <laughs> you know pretty heavy uh, no idea how that just randomly ended up in the yard mm -hmm. so this tree has just got we got some sort of container hanging there where uh, we're putting our uh, our cleaning supplies on that branch for now yeah that's uh, kind of the story and, and of course along the way during all of this about two and a half weeks after the flood um, my father-in-law passed away and uh, so as I said he he uh, my son's other place Poppy's place that's who uh, he named it after um, that's what my my kids called my father-in-law was Poppy and uh, so um, you know he kind of has this good luck bad luck scenario going my son does constantly as a result of that my mother-in-law asked that people contribute rather than send flowers or anything that they contribute to his rebuild, rebuilding fund and people were very generous and uh, you know he's going to be able to replace his equipment and get back up and running um, as soon as we have the building ready so um, you know very thankful for everybody's generosity on that and uh, um, one of the folks on the Sanford Strong page uh, Angela Cole I'm sure you've seen her name has been incredibly helpful to everybody in the community uh, she stopped by the other day and gave a donation from a uh, GoFundMe page that she had set up for local businesses that were rebuilding. So uh, he's been very lucky in that regard and, and very thankful that people have contributed in those ways. Um, you know, so uh, we're hoping that we'll be opened up at the end of August or early September and serving pizza to the community again. Oh, that's very fast. So, yeah. So pr just to get it on the record, insurance didn't cover anything. No, his insurance did not cover anything at all. Uh, in fact, um, pretty disappointed in his insurance agent because when Jack contacted him the next day, the insurance agent himself actually refused to even take a claim. Uh, Jack had to contact the corporate office uh, to try to submit a claim, which was then of course denied. Uh, and um, you know his policy doesn't cover a flood right in my opinion what happened here is not a flood what happened here is a failure of government and of private business uh, you know it would be no different than if I intentionally took a water hose and broke a window and stuck it in your house when you're gone for the weekend that's not a flood that's vandalism right and what we have here is is corporate and government vandalism really that has damaged all these people's homes and businesses uh, my son is you know lucky he's going to be able to get back up and running he did have another business that he's able to at least still have some income from but you know pe some people think that when somebody owns a business that they're automatically rich right and when my son bought this business he didn't really become rich he became in debt right he bought a job and he bought a job for himself he bought a job for the people that worked for him and uh, yeah he was doing well um, until the flood but now he has no income from this the people that work for him have no income from this and all up and down this street right where there were businesses those people no longer have an income and you know they're unemployed and fortunately the unemployment happened at a time where the COVID also struck and they're getting kind of a bonus from the unemployment right but that's about to to end and even worse than that you know I feel you know okay it's a business you can recover from that people's homes um, it just you know brings tears to my eyes when I think about homes that are just completely gone uh, the gentleman you spoke to a few weeks ago um, kind of in the neighborhood down you know at that end of town and to see 
the complete devastation of all those homes just gone. Sean Dunlop. Sean Dunlop, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, luckily it sounded like he was able to get their belongings at least out of the home, but that still doesn't, you know, do anything about the home itself. Um, and just all the other stories of, of that that you've heard of. You know, some people have minor basement damage. Some people have had nothing. Um, but in one way or the other, you know, anybody in this town and, and area have been affected by it. Yeah, I know. I just talked to Ellis Party Store, I think yesterday or the day before, and they are unable to get any insurance money either. So the only way that people are actually able to rebuild and recover is from the generous donations that people are providing and able to get back on your feet. Yeah, it's either donations or it's additional debt, right, uh, to do it. And, and my son did apply uh, through the SBA. Of course, he won't get anything from FEMA, and that was expected. Um, and he applied through the SBA and he does have that as an option if he wants to take on additional debt, but that's a pretty serious thing to do, right? Uh, especially it seems right now, you just don't know what's gonna come next in the world here, right? Uh, you know, are things gonna be shut down again or, you know, what's gonna happen? So um, yeah, he, he's very fortunate. It looks like, you know, we've been able to track down some good deals on used equipment wherever possible. Um, and uh you know he's gonna be ordering his ovens pretty soon and yeah like i said we're hoping to be baking pizzas here again soon uh i work in it this isn't my profession you know i i've been working during the day coming here at night spending all my weekends here i took a week of vacation around the fourth and was luckily able to get a lot of work done and like i said we have a a lot of family and friends that have been helping uh, my brother-in-law is a licensed builder and he teaches building trades so he's been incredibly instrumental and in even just advice but he came in and, and helped us do a ton of the framing and the majority of it really and uh and my brother that that jack bought the business from my brother greg has been great and he's been here a lot helping me and and offering support so um yeah very helpful you know friends like my friend roger is here today helping me uh, work on siding and things so yeah, uh, in that regard, we, we've been very fortunate, so. Can actually kind of see where the water level was back here too. There's a couple of rocks. Yeah. It must be pretty, some kind of light rock that actually floated up there. Well, on the roof, that, so. that rock actually, what you're seeing there is a piece of brick. Uh, you can kind of see the behind the, the chimney here mm -hmm. was a brick chimney um, that originally, apparently there must have been a fireplace or something in this building but we had no idea and it was one of those things you never notice right uh as many times as i pulled into this parking lot i never noticed a brick chimney until the ceiling's gone and we look up and like why is there a brick chimney above the ceiling mm. <laughs> so it was one of those things i think was kind of cobbled together and not really properly taken care of so we're able to, that got removed and so when that got broken out that some of the brick uh got got knocked over that way so we have to get up there and do a little bit of cleanup still on the roof itself um but yeah, the water line, uh, yeah, was about at the top of, of those shingles where they changed colors there. And, uh, you know, it, it was just amazing how much mud even made it above. When I, you know, I have a whole new respect for floods, you know, never had to deal with it before. And it's something that always happens somewhere else and you'd see it on the news and it'd be, you'd say, well, those poor people, they have water in their house and when you, see what really happens during a flood that it's not just clean water it's not just you know even a little bit dirty lake water or something coming in it's mud that it carries and the amount that was in here was incredible the tables all had you know an inch and a half probably of silty mud on top of them and just having to scrape all that off and get it outside and everything was quite a chore and the the ground everywhere you know back it was super slippery very difficult to walk and everything of course was soft for a few days and everything but um yeah that mud mud was everywhere it was everywhere well thank you for telling your story oh you're welcome appreciate it i'm glad you're able to get back on your feet and able to get this business going in the next couple thanks months. thanks for you know uh, uh allowing us to share my son's story and uh, i appreciate everything you've been doing with all your videos they've been great and it's a good way for people to see the reality of the situation on the ground um, rather than coming up and driving around and snooping around. So I appreciate what you're doing as well. Yeah, that's about all I can do today. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in. This is gonna be one heck of a 
one heck of a project, but I will keep everybody posted. And the goal is June 1st. And I don't know. I don't know if we can make it happen or not, but we're going to try. Thank you to everybody for supporting me, uh, subscribing to my channel, liking and sharing these videos. It does help a lot. If you want to contribute to the efforts here, make sure you visit the Sanford Strong and Edenville Strong Facebook pages. I'll leave the links in the description down below. And if you want to help support my page, I'll also leave my Patreon and PayPal account down below. Thanks for watching and make sure you catch my next video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.